I'm on a little adventure today and have spotted this creek area just full of tadpoles. But what exactly are tadpoles and what are they going to become? Let's find out together in this episode all about amphibians. I'm collecting a few of these guys to take with me so we can learn more. But don't worry, we're going to make sure to return them right back to this spot when we're finished. Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrates that need fresh water or a moist environment to survive. There are over 8,000 species of amphibians, and they live in a wide variety of environments throughout the world. The class Amphibia is comprised of three living orders. Enura consists of frogs and toads. Uridila consists of salamanders, including newts and mud puppies. Gymnophiona is made up of worm-like creatures called Sicilians. Frogs and toads are by far the most abundant of the amphibians. They make up 90% of this class and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. Almost all amphibians spend part of their lives in water and part on land. To begin the life cycle, in most egg-laying species, the female deposits a large number of eggs. These jelly-like eggs are laid in freshwater areas like lakes, streams, and ponds. Once developed enough to leave their protective egg covering, the next phase of amphibian life begins in an immature form called larva. The larva are aquatic and free-swimming. Frogs and toads at this stage are called tadpoles, just like these guys we found earlier. Tadpoles use their tails to swim around underwater and breathe through gills like fish. Over a period of time, these tadpoles will continue to grow and change. At a certain stage, limbs and lungs begin to develop. This drastic body change, called metamorphosis, allows them to eventually hop out of the water as adults to spend the rest of their lives on land at least part of the time. This is true for many species, but it's important to note that there are a few amphibians that don't follow this cycle. Some salamanders don't have an aquatic larval stage, while others are fully aquatic and don't go through complete metamorphosis. Amphibians don't have waterproof skin like reptiles do. They have special skin that allows them to absorb oxygen and water directly from their environment. This means that when on land, they can drink through their skin. And when underwater, they can breathe without gills. This special way of breathing is called cutaneous respiration. For example, while completely submerged, all of a frog's respiration takes place through the skin. The skin is composed of thin tissue that is very permeable and contains a large network of blood vessels. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse through the moist skin into or out of the frog's bloodstream. Their blood then circulates the oxygen to the rest of the body. Because of their special skin, amphibians require very specific living conditions. Their skin has to stay wet in order for them to absorb oxygen. If they become too dry, they have difficulty breathing. So when out of the water, mucus glands in the skin help to keep amphibians moist, which helps absorb dissolved oxygen in the air. Most amphibians secrete chemicals from their skin that make them taste pretty gross to predators. These secretions can be slippery or sticky and irritating to the skin, or deadly in the case of some tiny frogs found in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. These poison dart frogs are considered the most toxic and poisonous species on Earth. Through their bright colors and vibrant patterns, amphibians alert predators of the danger. So if you see a brightly colored frog, maybe leave it alone. Amphibians provide natural pest control by eating mosquitoes and other insects, but truly, amphibians will pretty much eat anything that's alive that they can fit in their mouth. This commonly adds snails, spiders, slugs, worms, mice, or even birds and bats to the menu. Obviously, the bigger the amphibian, the bigger the prey. Tadpoles are important grazers in aquatic systems because they aid in nutrient recycling and control algae populations. This helps to maintain the health and stability of freshwater ecosystems. Now traveling up the food web, amphibians can be a meal for many mammals, birds, reptiles, and even some meat-eating plants. 
If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Can you hear that? If you've ever been near a river or a lake like this one, you may have noticed a chorus similar to this one. Male toads and frogs love to show off. Toads and frogs are the only amphibians with vocal sacs, and therefore, the only amphibians with the ability to make noise. Frogs are one of the most abundant amphibian groups on the planet. There are frogs that dig, frogs that climb, and even frogs that fall with style. Thanks to their strong back legs, they are able to jump distances up to 20 times their own body length. Frogs and toads are often terms used interchangeably. While a toad is a type of frog, they are definitely not the same. The main differences are in their skin and where they live. Frogs have wet, smooth skin, long legs, webbed feet, and spend more time in water, while toads have skin that is often dry, with bumps that look like warts, short legs, stubby bodies, and spend more time on land. When you say it out loud like that, toads sound pretty meh, but I think they're super handsome. You're okay. What? He, like most toads, can secrete a toxic substance from the glands located here behind his eyes. That makes them taste really bad to predators. This little guy is an eastern narrow-mouthed toad. His skin looks more like a frog, but you can tell by his long, unwebbed toes that he's a toad. He is an adult, so this is a small species of toad. They eat primarily ants, which is why he has this weird fold of skin here on his back. This skin fold can be used to protect his sensitive eyes from any feisty ants. I'm out here in the forest, peeking under some rotting logs, hoping to find some examples of our next type of amphibian, the salamanders. You might be tempted to call this guy a lizard due to their similar body shape long, slender bodies with tails. But there are some major differences. We now know that amphibians have special skin, so the most obvious difference is the skin. Lizards have rough, scaly skin, while salamanders have this smooth, moist skin. Also, their legs are completely different. Salamanders have legs that are all the same size and length with no nails or claws, while lizards occasionally have slightly larger back legs and always have nails or claws. Salamanders live mostly throughout the Northern Hemisphere in moist habitats such as caves, wetlands, streams, and forests like this one. They also have remarkable skills. If a salamander loses a leg or a tail, they can regrow it. While these guys resemble earthworms and snakes with no arms or legs, they have the hallmark thin, moist skin of amphibians. Their eyes are covered in skin or bone, so they are blind or nearly blind. But they don't really mind, because most live underground, where they tunnel through the soil. They consume earthworms and other digging invertebrates, cohabitating with them in stream beds and soils throughout South and Central America, Africa, and South Asia. Amphibians are what scientists call indicator species. Indicator species are animals who are the first to be affected by changes to the environment and pollution. Due to their porous eggs and semi-permeable skin, they are extremely susceptible to environmental threats. Toxins from waste can easily seep into their skin, affecting their growth and health. Currently, at least one third of known amphibian species are threatened with extinction. So the next time you're out enjoying nature, be mindful of what's going into the water because amphibians like these guys will be affected in a big way. Let's get you back where we found you when you were just a little tadpole. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Let's go. No, don't run away.